Hey everybody, David from Renegade Soundplay here. Today, I'll be starting part one of my video series on how to make Nintendo NES and Game Boy style music in your DAW. So you won't need a Game Boy, but they're great for inspiration. So before I get to that, please hit like and subscribe so you'll be notified about the next video in this series. Okay, so to make an NES or Game Boy style music track, both of these products back in the day had very similar sound generator ICs in them. Uh, and the interesting thing about these ICs is that they, or chips, is that they had a very limited number of voices for you to play, or as they called it, sound channels. So you, you couldn't make a full palette of chords in all these different tracks because you only had two pulse generator tracks, a triangle wave, and a noise generator to work with. And that was it. And, okay, you had some rudimentary ability to play back some samples, but that wasn't very common. So, what did they do and how did they do it? Stick around. Okay, let's get started in making our Game Boy or NES style track. Now, I'm using Logic, but you can use whatever DAW you want to use because Highscore runs in Contact and Contact is a standard VST. The first thing you'll notice is that I have four instrument tracks in Logic right here, named after those sound channels that I mentioned before. So we have Pulse 1, Pulse 2, Triangle, and Noise. And I have four instances of contact for high score open, one for each track. Here we have Pulse 1, and I just have it set to a square wave with a simple on-off envelope generator setting. Now, if you were going to make a sound for an NES or Game Boy, you would use one of the pulse waves at the start of the waves list. So here we have a square wave, then we have the 25% pulse wave. You can hear how it gets more nasally, and we have the 12.5% wave, which is even more nasal tone. We can use any one of those three waves, and you will be faithful to an NES or Game Boy. Now for our production, we're just going to start with a square wave. I've already created a track for this. Let me play that for you. So it doesn't sound like there's much going on right there. Until we add the second pulse channel track, we really just have a single note. Because each sound channel on an NES or Game Boy can only play one note at a time. Now, for the second sound channel, I've added the 25% pulse wave, which will give a different character from the first sound channel. All of a sudden, now we have intervals playing. Ooh, let me unmute that. I also added a nice pitch bend glide to the second sound channel track. So there you have our first two tracks. Now, let's move on to the triangle wave channel, and I'll explain what I'm using the triangle wave for. And here in high score, you can see that I've set this track's wave to the staircased triangle wave, not the pure triangle wave form. Now, you could use the pure triangle wave, but it won't sound right for the NES or Game Boy. The pure triangle wave is not very interesting, but instead, let's go with the staircase triangle wave, which is what is found in an NES or Game Boy. It's full of all of those wonderful artifacts in its tone, and that's what gives it that NES or Game Boy sound. So, we're going to use the staircase triangle wave as our bass sound. Let's play it back now with all three channels. All that's left are some drums. The only NES or Game Boy channel that we have left is the noise channel. Let's go to high score for the noise track. We would notice that I have all three wave generators turned off, but the separate noise generator level is turned all the way up. The noise generator in high school also has its own envelope generator. I've set it up with the fastest attack and a short decay 
to give us a drum hit sound. So there we have a good 80s drum hit. Very 8-bit sounding. Now for this simple drum track, I just used a low note followed by a high note to simulate a rudimentary kick-snare combination. It's pretty basic, but this is giving you more of an of a old-school NES sound. So there you have all four NES or Game Boy channels combined to make a song. I've gone ahead and mixed it up a bit. I've changed the Pulse 2 line for the second half of the song from being the top note of the third's intervals to actually being a solo part. Let's hear the whole thing now and you can hear what I'm talking about. And there you have your NES music track. It's great to see how just using four monophonic tracks or channels can give you a full song. When you come back for part two of this series, we're gonna get into some more advanced concepts and we'll be making some more complex tracks just using the same four monophonic channels of the NES and Game Boy. The only thing left to do now is to use Highscore's speaker simulator so we can sound like a Game Boy. If we go to the effects tab here on our Pulse 1 channel track, you will see the speaker simulator here. This is set per track. I'm going to turn on the Game Boy and I'm going to do that for all of our tracks. Now when I play it back, you're going to hear that it's sounding like it's coming out of a Game Boy speaker. So that was part one of our series on Nintendo NES and Game Boy music that you can make right in your own DAW. Come back for part two and we'll learn some of the more advanced topics like using the arpeggiator and creating chords with more than two notes. See you then. Thanks. Bye.